Hey everyone. So this is my third attempt at a video. Uh, mom life is coming in real strong. So hopefully I can get through this one. Um, it's been about three weeks since I last checked in with all of you. It's been kind of crazy. I'm sure for all of you, like with Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything. But basically, um, yeah, we're still doing the same thing. You know, except this time it's cancer and colds for the last week. Um, everybody's got a cold in the house except for me, which if you can imagine how that's possible, I don't even know. Um, well, I do know. I think it's, um, they give me a shot that sits on the back of my arm called Nulasta. And basically that reproduces my white blood cells after each round of chemo. So, um... Uh, what is it like 24 hours after chemo this little thing goes off in my arm and it injects a medicine that helps reproduce it which it essentially pulls from like your bone marrow so it can make you really achy which it did this past couple rounds where like I'm so sore but anyways um that yeah that shoots my white blood cells up really high so I think that's why I'm not getting sick oh fingers crossed but anyways everybody's doing good now everybody's on the mend um, so yeah, we've just been busy. Uh, it's been, it's been, um, three weeks, like I said, since I last checked in and, um, two rounds of chemo go after the holidays, um, was a bit rough guys. It was rough in different ways. You know, they took me off of one of my chemos called oxaliplatin because, I was getting the neuropathy in my hands and feet, which again is losing the feelings in your fingers and toes, and then can work up your arms and legs into other parts of your body. But basically it, it's that numbing sensation. So it feels like pins and needles all the time. So they took me off of that one. Apparently all of the platin chemos that end in platin, so oxaliplatin has neuropathy as a major side effect. So. We dropped that one, so I thought I would be feeling quite better. A little bit better, but again, I dealt with other things that I didn't see coming. And I don't know if any of you out there that are going through chemo or know people that go through chemo, but they told me in the beginning to journal so that I would know when my side effects would come on. So I knew what to expect when. But I can tell you this, every single week has been completely different. Like completely different than the last so this past um, round I basically um, dealt with my hands and feet even though they took me off the XL platen and lowered the 5FU which was the one I take home in the pump I got really bad hand foot syndrome on top of the neuropathy which basically is it's it's hand foot syndrome is from 5FU and it's like swelling and redness and heat goes to your fingers and toes and so that was pretty tough like it was painful and uncomfortable made it hard to relax hard to sleep and um and yeah, like I told you guys, I'm working with spiritual healers and to the point where I was working with one and he described it to me as it feels like your hands have like machine guns going off in your arms and they're ending at your fingertips. And I was like, that sounds about right. That sounds about how uh, the pain I'm feeling is described. So that was brutal. And then you guys, I dealt with some really dark days at the end of that round. You know, usually I, I struggle with a bit of anxiety, um, you know, fears and all of that. Um, a low dark days is what I call them uh, after chemo. And I usually can come out by Friday. But what happened this round was I didn't really feel bad until the weekend. And when I did, it was super dark for super long like it was almost impossible for me to break through and again i've learned that your stomach and the bacteria and you know it's essentially killing everything inside of me the chemo is the good bacteria is the bad bacteria that feed my brain that help me function and stay positive and really it's it is so much harder to get through 
on a on a on a daily basis but um you know I let fear anxiety stress um all of that kind of slip through to the point where like I was fearful of going back to work and what that looks like and 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 can I work because my hands hurt so bad and my feet hurt to stand on and and anxiety like am I going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life I mean really I will be struggling not struggling what I'm struggling with right now you guys is that my baby will not stop crying and so I'm really distracted um and it's really hard to make a video <laughs> these days I hope some of you can relate so you know what instead of starting all the way over again I'm just gonna pause I'm gonna go put a pacifier in and then I'm gonna come back so hopefully I can do that within like a minute I'll be right back We'll see if that works. I don't know. Did you have to wait long? Oh, I feel like I have to do this every time. And now you know why it's been three weeks since I've checked in. So I think I left off with saying, we'll see how long that lasts. Um, we, I left off talking about a bit of my dark days and just all the fear and anxiety and stress that kicks in and I even made an Instagram post about it and it was kind of struggled to even post about it because I felt so vulnerable but I just kind of felt like I needed to share all sides of it you know I I know that I'm pretty positive for the most part and that I don't want people to see me when I'm not doing as very well of course excuse me but I just felt like it was important to share that side of it because it's so true like I was uncomfortable in my own skin and didn't even recognize myself but the truth is is I mean people deal with this on a daily basis and and it just made me appreciate the life living day to day and dealing with the struggle and hopefully you know that I can come out of it and I was thankful even more than I usually am to be feeling good again so I just felt like it's important to talk about you guys and you know it crept through big time I can't really quite I mean tears and just you guys I know I'm gonna beat this I know I'm gonna make it through but the truth is is I just wanted to give up I just didn't want to work hard anymore I didn't I, I at times just wanted to put my head through a wall like that's how stressed out and and dark it was but you know somebody described to me that I shouldn't really call them dark days and I, again I might have talked about this before but essentially it's just I'm living life I'm feeling happy when I'm happy and I'm feeling sad when things are sad and at that moment things were sad and I just I just lived in it. So um, with all that being said, I eventually came out of it, which was good, and ended up back in the chemo chair, but just for immune therapy that uh, following week. And my doctor, I had a meeting with my doctor, and um, if you guys can hear, the baby is still crying, but I'm hopeful that she'll cry it out because we're at that point now. She was napping, the mailman came, woke her up, because Nola was barking, and here we are. So, um, yes, yeah, so I met with my doctor. It's been a few months, almost a couple months. You know, everything was going good. Um, numbers are dropping, and no new things were popping up, so kind of not meeting with my doctor is a good thing. 
and she even said that when I saw her, but um, they, after describing my hands and feet through that week, she decided to take me off of the pump um, because she just said that's your body giving you the sign that you need a break. So we're going to take me off of the pump for hopefully forever, you guys. But the truth is, is there, this is where it gets tricky because as we start to pull off chemos, we have to hope and pray and think positive that my tumors won't grow, that they won't come back because I'm on less chemo. So right now I am on just Iranitegin and immunotherapy, Herbitex. And it's better. It's not like one chemo is like a freaking vacation for me at this point. Like I feel... I, like, I don't get knocked down nearly as bad, but again, um, I have to stay hopeful. You know, the good thing is, is my CEA numbers, my tumor markers went down again. So they were at like 380 and they're now down to 144, which is huge because I had an extra break and less chemo in there. So, um, that's a good thing. I'm hopeful. I'm so hopeful that we can continue to shrink and continue to take my numbers down over the next month as well without the exaloplatin and without the 5-FU. So again, this is why my doctor said it just gets a little tricky because as we take you off of chemos because your body can't take it because I'm getting the neuropathy, my hands and feet hurt, my head is getting really cloudy, um, my platelets are dropping and having a harder time coming up. It's just basically your body saying, we can't take this anymore. So, um, she said, the tricky part is again, if it shrinks, great. If it doesn't, what do we do next? Do we put you back on another chemo? That's going to bring back the same side effects. We don't want you to lose, have permanent damage in your hands and feet. So again, this is where you have to like try and find this balance of um, less chemo, bigger results. Um, you know, hopefully not to get put on um, more chemo at the end. So we'll see what happens, you guys. I get um, a PET scan on December 28th. So after Christmas and before New Year's and really... Um, I'm scared for this one, kind of more than I was before. I feel like this will determine a few things about work and life after or with cancer. Life with cancer, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So, um, also another thing that my doctor brought up was um, how my head was in the meeting. And I go, not good. I was like, not good at all. I was like, I am, I'm just struggling a bit. And she goes, you know what? I see this a lot. I see this a lot in uh, cancer patients. Um, you know, people that have been in chemo as long as you have. And, um, and she's like, I feel like what we're looking at here is depression. And I was like, oh, that's what we're looking at. So I... I, of course, started crying, and it's just because it was maybe a little bit of a relief, like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, at least I have an answer for feeling as crappy as I did, and, and you know, she talked to me about put, wanting to put me on an antidepressant, and, you know, I have no issue with being put on something if it will make me feel better. She said, you know, it's just it's about quality of life at this point. Like you don't want to feel depressed and down and, and these horrible feelings, um, through this experience any more than you need to. She's like, you don't need the added pressure and really like it could hinder my healing. So, um, so yeah, so she talked to me about being put on an antidepressant and, um, you know, because it will help. And, uh, you know, I think what we've kind of decided is that I'm going to look at it through the supplement route. I know that you can balance yourself out because again, my adrenals, my serotonin levels, like none of that is able to lift me up and hormones on top of it. Like I'm just getting kind of knocked down left and right. 
um, between the chemo hormones and just not being able to bounce back quickly. So um, I'm going to try and go the supplement route just because we have been doing that from the beginning and it seems to be delivering the results um, that we want for other things. So, and I know with like antidepressants, like it can take a while for you to even find one that works, that you feel better on, that makes you feel good. So I, um, I'm, I know that I would like to try and do the supplement route first before going on an antidepressant, only because I know I have to like wean off of it as well at the end. Um, so if I cannot mix another drug into the pile that I'm already using, um, that would be good. But I have no problem somewhere down the line if I'm not getting balanced out through the supplement world to just live a happier, healthier, mentally life. So, and trust me, you guys, like I have so many um, friends and people I know that, um, coworkers and, and family and, you know, that are and other like cancer survivors that have told me like that once they got on it, it, it changed their life. So I know that it works. So again, um, we'll see what happens. I'm going to try and go the supplement route and I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, also acupuncture. I've been going to see an acupuncturist for my neuropathy and she's been hitting some good points for that as well. I kind of did something different this week and saw her usually when the depression and stuff kicks in. So um, hope, I think that helped through this weekend so far. But yeah, you guys, it's something new each week and I'm learning so much and I truly believe that like I was, I kind of one day woke up and goes, oh, well, I guess I'm meant to experience some sort of depression so that I can maybe relate to more people and help more people along this journey because um, I know that it's got to be a struggle for everybody and some people probably struggle it from the very beginning or near the end. And I know everybody looks at me and goes, well, what do you expect, Meg? Like, we're not surprised that you maybe are depressed. Like, look at all the things you're juggling and what's on your plate. And, and I guess I'm not surprised either. But I'd say I have more good days than bad. And, and I feel a lot better this round. Uh, they took me off of, again, the 5-FU and the oxaloplatin. So this past week has been the first week where I've been on just one chemo guys and it's been um I think a game changer so I'm really hoping that we don't have to add anything on top of this I'm really curious um about this next step you guys you know I'm looking at life with cancer now I will have to go back to work at some point in 2020 which is uh, again I was fearing but I think my husband, Kirk, he was kind of came to me one day and was like, you know, you might be looking at this all wrong. You might, you know, need to look at going back to work. It's a good thing. Like I'll get a piece of myself back. And he was totally right. As soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, I think you're right. He goes, I, you're, you might feel better. You might get relief and, and feel back to your normal self. So I'm going to try and work on put it like picturing that and, and, um, you know, I'll go back to a safe place. I know that a lot of people will be looking out for me. Um, and we'll have my back. So I feel good about that. So we'll see you guys right now. It's just operation, get through the holidays, enjoy the holidays. You know, I, I usually work so hard and then blast through them and then they're over where, on the way home from chemo the other day with my girlfriend Rochelle, I, I like, I have to have a conversation with myself. I don't know if any of you do this, but I was like, Megan, don't push yourself this week. I go, don't get ahead of yourself. Just because you're on less chemo doesn't mean you're going to feel better um, right away. So just relax. Enjoy the holiday. Take care of yourself and slow down. Like I have to have actual conversations out loud with myself in order to like calm the F down because otherwise I'm gonna keep myself busy. I don't know how to not work a 12 hour day. Guys, I've been doing it for so long, but I will tell you this much as I, I have slowed down 
I've relaxed a bit more than I usually do and I think I'm finally doing Christmas shopping. So that's a relief as well with what? Four days to spare. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, what else you guys? I I feel like I've kind of covered everything. I'm so sorry. I feel like this video was so all over the place with Dylan crying and it being my third attempt. Parker kept coming in and out the first few and and then her crying, she seems to have quieted down now. Um, so hopefully my mom instincts kicked in really well or my mother-in-law got her up. I'm not sure. But you guys, we're still doing it over here. Uh, one day at a time. I hope all of my updates either help you know that we're doing okay or help some of you um, feel less alone. You know, there's this really, again, strong community building around me of people that are going through colon cancer, or fighting the same fight of colon cancer or other cancers. And and you guys, I, I, I hope I'm making a difference. And I hope, because I know that like all of them are making a difference for me and sharing their stories and their journey. And, and I guess I'm just going to keep getting on here and doing that. Um, it's, it takes a lot for me to get out here these days because I feel like um, maybe when so much time passes, maybe I need to do it more often for shorter because otherwise I just ramble. And who has 20 minutes? You guys, we all, we, nobody has 20 minutes anymore to sit down and watch um, me talk. So um, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. I hope you have a Happy Hanukkah if you celebrate Hanukkah. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's what I do. I hope that you enjoy your last couple days of the year. And you guys, um, we'll see. We'll see. I think hopefully I'll check in before the new year and then again after. I appreciate you all. This has been one hell of a year. And so, um, To be continued. I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas and I'll talk to you before the new year. Lots of updates. I love you all. I see you all. I feel you all. Thank you all so much. And um, again, till next time. Love you all. <laughs>